I'd like to start this by uh, a few thanks. You all should have a program either electronically, if you've downloaded, or physically. And I want you to look at the bottom of the first page. And I'd like you to read those names. Because uh, I think that we have a really good session. I think everybody's going to be uh, very pleased uh, with, with the quality of they get. Those people whose names are at the bottom are the ones who organized it, who put together the team. We've had, had many meetings in person, many meetings by telephone, uh, individual meetings. So I want to thank the planning committee who just done a very spectacular job. So it's, it's on. So under the cover, under the first page here. Um, second, a conference like this takes a lot of, lot of staff work. And uh, we've had staff from the pre court Energy Efficiency Center, the, from the pre court Institute for Energy, from conference consultants, um, who um, put a significant, no, significant amount of effort, wrong word, a lot of work in this. And um, you'll, you'll see um, the results of that lot of work. Um, if you notice from, from the program, if you flip through the bios of the speakers, uh, great group. And I want to thank all the speakers who are here. They'll get individual thanks in their sessions. But I want to thank them as a group because, I mean, can you imagine a, a good conference without good speakers? And, and that's what we, we just ha have a great group here. Um, this is one of the, the few um, conferences that, that we believed all along that there's many ways you can communicate messages about energy and environment. One thing is through the, through the speakers. Another thing is through art. And, and we have Michael Killian's work, Killian's work out front there. I hope you all take a look at, at it. Uh, it's it's uh, decidedly political art. It's, it's, it's decidedly environmental art. And it's, it's a way of integrating art into what's going on. And finally, you see around, with all the student volunteers, please stand up a minute. Come on, all of you stand up. Some of you are already standing. <laughs> Turn to any of them if you need help. Um, and it's uh, just a great group of people who are helping. Um, a note on lunch. Um, when we have lunch, I've been told that it's entirely vegan except for one except the chicken at the end. And vegans will be able to know the difference between the chicken at the end and everything else. So you can believe that there is no meat in anything else other than the thing that obviously has meat. And, 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 there's, and um, it's also designed to be gluten-free. And I, there's only one thing that's not gluten-free, but, but uh, boy, I, you know, you can become Secretary of Energy by having forgotten what that thing is. And, and I, I've forgotten what that thing is, but, but you can ask if you want to know. Um, if you think about the energy system, uh, we really are in the midst of a time of some, some remarkable changes. Um, and I don't mean just now. I mean over, take the last decade. And I'll show you some numbers on the last decade in a minute, or at least from the year 2000. First, we have real changes in technology. The supply technologies, we finally have a point where the renewables are, are 
competitive, uh, maybe with a little subsidy in there still, but they're, get, they're getting there. So the technology on the supply side is, is, uh, has changed. Uh, distributed energy, um, besides wind and solar, but there's many companies in Silicon Valley that are uh, using fuel cells, bloom, fuel, bloom energy fuel cells that will, will give you quality distributed energy. On the demand side, we have fundamental changes in technology. The electric vehicles uh, coming in, light emitting diodes, uh, heat pumps, really an improvement. So technology is changing. Markets are changing. Uh, we have community, cho anybody who lives in San Mateo County or Santa Clara County have noticed that community choice aggregation is, is here now. It's, it's real. Markets are changing, but that's not the only markets. Transportation markets um, are changing with new mobility. Uh, need I say Uber, Lyft, sidecar, uh, carbon markets, may not, maybe not in the United States, but Canada and China that will be with the cap and trade studying carbon markets. So market structures are changing. Security issues are still here. It used to be energy security was only how much oil we got imported from the Middle East. Now if you don't, aren't paying attention to security at the issue of your buildings or your video camera system that could be hacked and distribute malware or your, or your refrigerator that can, can be hacked and distributed malware. We think there's physical and cyber issues, security issues. Those are, those are changing and it's a new recognition. Um, CO2 trends, I want to just give a, just, a, just a slide or two um, just to show you um, some changes that, that are happening. If you, I can't see, see this very well, but I can see this, and so I can illustrate. If you uh, think about carbon dioxide emissions, something we call the Kaya identity, Carbon dioxide, we can think of as equal to the product of three things. GDP, economic growth, energy per unit of GDP, and multiplied by carbon dioxide per unit of energy. It's just an identity because things cancel out. But the importance of this is the first GDP, that's economic growth, is what's important. Energy per unit of GDP, that's the energy efficiency. And carbon dioxide per unit of energy, that's how clean the energy system is. So it's useful to think about the trends over time that we've had. I'd like to go back to the um, time of the, before the energy crisis. Can you, no, that doesn't show up here. Um, the, the graphs on the, on the left-hand side were the time periods from 1960 to 1973, before the oil crisis. The blue it says the energy intensity of the economy was declining a fraction of a percent. The, that was the, the, the blue here. You can see the, the blue over here. The um, carbon intensity of the energy consumption was was decreasing a tiny fraction of percent. Those added up together to t carbon intensity for the US economy, carbon dioxide per dollar of real GDP, declining a half a percent a year. But the economy was growing almost 4%. And therefore, with the growth of the, the economy of 4%, but a decarbonization of half a percent a year, carbon dioxide emissions were growing 3.8%. Then we had the oil crisis in 1973. Shot across the bow, everything changed. And you look at decade by decade after that, that's the blue energy intensity of the economy was declining on a decade average about two percentage points a year. Now, two percentage points a year over 40 years is tremendously big. 
but the energy system wasn't cleaning up very much. So that as the, if, if, when you subtract that 2% that per year from the economic growth, sometimes were carbon dioxide was not growing much at all. Other times where we had more rapid growth, low oil prices, low energy prices, less energy attention, less policy attention, so less energy efficiency. Um, carbon dioxide was growing. Look at the last five years, last six years, uh, 2000 through 2016. Remarkable change. Energy efficiency was still growing, at, uh, uh, still improving. The energy intensity of the economy was still declining half a uh, about two percentage points a year. But finally, the energy system was cleaning itself up at little over 1%, about 1.2% a year. Those two accumulate so that we were decarbonizing the economy at a rate of about 3.2%. We've had pathetically slow economic growth, 2% year economic growth. And so if we, the carbon intensity is declining 3.2, over 3%, economy is only growing 2%, carbon dioxide emissions are declining over 1% a year. So that's the good news. Um, how is this changing? You can actually decompose what's behind this, and I found this interesting. Um, this is the total percentage reduction of energy consumption decarbonization from 2010, and we've roughly 5% decarbonized because of the reduction of coal, which I hope nobody's trying to bring back, except for maybe metallurgical coal, which maybe will come back. But 5% coal, natural gas, the increase of natural gas has, has, has decarbonized less than you think because the carbon intensity of, of, of natural gas is not much less than the average of the whole system. So increases don't make a lot of difference. But, but the increase of natural gas is a lot of what's pushed out coal. So much of this, the blue plus the, the orange, really has to do with the growth of natural gas. And we're going to talk about fracking in, at, at lunch, so that's uh, going to be it. So the cleaning up the energy system, oops, has been dominantly a shift from, natural from coal to natural gas. Of renewables, we've had about 1% cleaning up of the energy system because of wind and a, tiny, and a tiny additional amount because of solar. This is all of US the data. So what's changing is we are cleaning up the energy system because we're changing the mix of energy and we're cleaning up our economy because of energy efficiency. That's a remarkable change if it continues uh, we're in the midst of that, we're in the midst of that, that uh, change. Um, so I'll, I'll end up quickly go, going to it, just remind you of what's going on in the conference. We have a theme, economic security and the environment. You'll see some of each. Security, you'll see things at the three level, at least three levels of security. The resilience of the energy system as a whole, the security, physical, and cybersecurity of the grid, and security of buildings, uh, which is, in my mind, probably the most vulnerable part of, of the overall system is our buildings and the stuff we have in the buildings. Uh, second, the environment, we'll talk about issues of climate local impacts of fracking, environmental issues will be in here, and economics, we'll talk about financing evolving markets, um, data use, uh, changing, and the overall changes. So I think everybody should have a good time uh, because there's a lot of those three things, great people to talk about it. So with no more comments, 
I'd like to bring up uh, uh, introduce uh, our keynote speaker, Jonathan Pershing. If Jonathan, you'd come on, come on up while I'm saying a few words about you.